Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello and welcome back everyone. We were discussing the bearing capacity as part of our Geotechnical Engineering 2 course for the 5th semester. I am Dr. Jahan Zewisraj and this is the 9th week um, and the second lecture related to the bearing capacity of soil. Earlier if you recall we have discussed the theory presented by Tirzavi in 1943 for continuous and strip foundations. It, the <clears throat> Tezavi's model uh, incorporated three different concepts, uh, three different aspects of a foundation, one involving the shear strength of the soil, the other involving the surcharge, uh, and the other one involving the soil self weight. So uh, in a general form for all types of foundations including the strip, round and square shapes, we could have uh, been incorporated in the, the SC and S gamma shape factors and uh, using them makes it a general expression. We solved a couple of numericals if you recall and we also made use of this table that you see over here. Um, this value related to zero degree um, angle of internal friction of soil should be remembered by all uh, geotechnical engineers in general. Similarly, for strip foundations, uh, as you can see that the value of SC and S gamma is 1 each. So, just present, putting it inside makes it simply the original model of Trizavi that was presented for strip foundations. Now, moving forward, after, after Trizavi, there are several researchers who worked in this area and presented some modifications. So, uh, some of them recomputed the bearing capacity factors NC and NQ and um, uh, they found out that they do not change much but n gamma varies significantly so mainly because of the assumption of the wedge shape of soil immediately below the foundation upon which this model of Terzavi that you see over here was originally formulated so Meerhoff for example presented a general form of pairing capacity equations and he incorporated some new factors involving the depth factor and the inclination factor for the foundation. If you see the rest of the factors, uh, only SQ, that is a shape factor related to the um, overburden, um, uh, overburden um, portion of the bearing capacity. The, this new factor is incorporated over here. Then the depth factor DQ and I factor is the inclination factor for the overburden. Similarly, S gamma, D gamma, and I gamma. And these are the factors defined over here. The if you just closely see the original equation is the same C and C gamma D F N Q plus half gamma B N gamma. But these factors S D and I in all three terms they are the new factors to incorporate the shape of the foundation, the depth where the you place the foundation, and the inclination factors. If you want to uh, compute these shape factors. We have got the formulas for them over here as you can see for various values of phi's where uh, kp factor is given by tan square 45 plus 5 by 2 similarly depth factor again kp may be computed from this and what is kp we'll be studying this uh, in our next topic of little earth pressure and we'll establish what do we mean by this um, this coefficient kp so again for any phi value you can use this expression for phi greater than 10 degrees you can use this simplified expression and phi equals to 0 degrees makes it dq and d gamma equals to 1 and the inclination factor means that if you have your foundation placed at, at an inclination it's not perfectly uh, vertical or normal to the ground surface in that case you may have to use the inclination and you may have to compute these factors i c i q and i can this these factors uh, are also required to be used by another equation presented by vesic so vesic also presented uh, an additional model uh, another model that modifies this Zavi's original model and he actually introduced uh, some new factors from his own experience so Hansen's general bearing capacity equation gets the shape like this where 
uh, more geometric factors G, C, G, Q, and G gamma have been brought in. I think you now you can better understand that it's the same C and C, uh, C and C, and then S C, the shape factor. So until this point, until gamma D F N Q S Q, and 0.5 gamma B N gamma, S gamma. So these D, I, G, B are the new factors that they have incorporated. And what is this B gamma, B, C, B, Q and B gamma? They have been defined over here. These are the base factors or tilted base. You might have to consider them. This is the general form of Hansen's equation. And previously that we were uh, looking at over here. That's a Meerhoff's equation. So moving forward. Wisik presented his own equation and uh, general bearing capacity equation is identical but with slightly different factors. So for Wisik, we have got just a difference of the com computation of the factors but he used the same expression as you could see over here, this large equation, Hansen's equation. So Wisik and Hansen's equation are the same. However, they compute factors using different methods. So this table for example is for Hansen's parameters and this table that you see on the right side of your screen is for uh, V6 parameter, V6 equation or V6 parameter. Is that okay? So they have summarized it in the form of a very simple table and if you recall in one of the numericals that is I think the second example of the last video or last lecture uh, we used NC value 5.14 instead of 5.7 and you can see that this is coming from this table that incorporates Meerhoff, Hansen and Basics model. So they use different expressions and they compute it differently that's why the value of NC uh, is different for um, for these uh, gentlemen Meerhoff, Hansen and Basics pairing capacity equations. Rest of the factors are, I think, quite understandable now. And wherever they will be used, uh, you might be able to actually get them used, uh, uh, obtained from this table. Again, 0 to 5 means that if your value of 5 is between this, you must interpolate the value of NC, NQ, N gamma, and rest of the factors. So, this capital H that you see in this, this uh, subscript. Is, cap is for Hansen, this capital M is for Meerhoff, and this capital V is for Vesic. And as we established earlier, NC and NQ doesn't change much for all these methods. So I think this is quite understandable as well. Now we'll quickly look at a very simple problem. A square column foundation is to be designed for a gross allowable load of 250 kN. If the load is inclined at an angle of 15 degree to the vertical, determine the width of the foundation, take a factor of safety of uh, 3, unit weight of the soil is 19 kN per cubic meter, phi dash, that is drain angle of internal friction is 35 degrees, cohesion is just 5 kPa, uh, the depth of the foundation is 1 meter, so D is also given to you. We are using this uh, equation, Hansen's equation, I guess this is, you can double check. So we can use the table directly for the given five values. So for example, the NC, NQ and N gamma values are 46.12, 33.3 and 48.03. Now our five value was 35. So we go back to the table and we see that uh, our 35 lies between 34 and 36 degrees here in the table. So between 42 and 50, it must be something around 46. This must be something around 33. So let's double check. Yes, 46.12 for NC, 33.3 for NQ. And let's see what is N gamma because we are using Hansen's model. So between 34 and 36, your value of the N gamma should be coming like 24.5 or something. So they are using V6, I think value. Yeah, they're using V6 value, not Hansen's or Meerhoff's value. 
so v6 value should be somewhere around 48 and you can see that it is 48 over here now accordingly because they are using v6 model uh, if it is not uh, mentioned in the question that you use a specific model you must choose the best of the models that you understand or model of your own choice <laughs> because the expression is the same for all the models uh, it's up to you which model you would like to use so they are using v6 model uh, as part of your assignment you must use Hansen's equation Hansen's model or its parameters uh, by resolving this numerical and then Mayroff's parameters by resolving this example and then you must compare that what is the width that you're going to get now SC, SQ, DC, DQ and uh, IC, IQ, I gamma all these factors have been calculated and you can see the calculation steps quite clearly mentioned over here the QU that is actually this equation initial equation gen, general bearing capacity equation for uh, Mayer or Hansen or Visic they just put in the values and you can see that B is the variable in this here's B so this is unknown that's what we are going to design when you simplify this it turns out to be a second degree second degree equation because B is in the denominator of the second term so Q and U we all know the safe ultimate bearing capacity is ultimate bearing capacity minus whatever the portion you excavate or dig so that is turning out to be q u minus 19 times 1 1 is the depth of the foundation 19 is the unit width of the foundation so gamma d over here as you can see just putting the values in then we must use a factor of safety of 3 as mentioned in the statement of the numerical and uh, we must add the surcharge of the backfill that we are adding if you recall the definitions in our first video of pairing capacities last week so just put in the values divide them by 3 simplify them it's turning out to be a uh, second degree equation just multiply that with b square to get the gross load because this pairing capacity is pressure you multiply that with the square foundation that is b by b and uh, finally your expression looks like this that should be equal to the gross load that is 250 uh, ton or whatever the units were mentioned over here as you can see yeah 250 kilonewton that is 25 tons and when you simplify this third order equation you can use even your calculators maybe or use your knowledge of uh, solving such equations then there must be I think one negative answer one uh, illogical answer and one should be a logical answer in positive as you can see over here and that is going to be the correct answer because it's a third degree equation so you must get three values of B is that okay next uh, again a very simple problem a square foundation is shown in figure 16.9 that is below the footing will carry a gross mass of 30,000 kilogram similar thing using a factor of safety of 3 determine the size of the footing that is the size B use equation 16.12 means he wants you to use the general bearing capacity equation that is used for Hansen, Mayroff and V6 model so soil property that is phi is mentioned over here you can just simply multiply that with G it will become kilonewton per cubic meter gamma phi dash C dash so that's what, that's what he's doing right away. He's determining the in kilonewton per cubic meter the gamma. Total gross load to be supported uh, is uh, determined in kilonewton. That is allowable load, and it should be. Uh, now he's using the simply the Zavis model. That's all. Because it's not mentioned what model you should use, so you can even use the Zavis model if it is not mentioned. If you deem it all right if inclinations are mentioned then definitely go for such a model in which inclination factors are there when the ground condition depth foundation width and such things are mentioned then go by that way use that model which fits the required data if no such thing is mentioned it's a straightforward question like this i think the zavi model is all right so please do solve this numerical and if you have question we can take them during the class uh, thank you very much for your attention. We will continue with the next video. Stay tuned. This is the first part that is over. Thank you.